YouTube. It's been a while. Um, sorry, I haven't been posting. Girls are on spring break, handling some business. So, got out the range today. It's a beautiful day. It's gonna be like 81 today here in the where I live. So I'm just gonna warm up with some wedge shots. Got a 56 aiming. I got my target line aiming at my the 110. I can't get there with the 56. Um, but I'm going to start working on something here. Practicing pre-shot routine. Trying to get the grip more out of my palms and towards the fingertips. Towards I don't know, what, what do you call this? I don't know, someone tell me. And uh, really getting the face square, looking at it like this. Getting a nice and square. I have a tendency to close the face when I'm gripping. And I'm also working on getting more uh, hinge early in my swing and kind of shortening my swing. I wear it out, stand up and go way tall over here. There's no need to stay small right here and compress that ball. Not bad. Might be able to get there today. I don't know. I try not to. A lot of people over swing, take less club and swing so hard. There's nothing wrong with taking a little bit more club and swinging easy and getting the ball in the air. worried about distance I'm sorry direction not really worried about distance direction to me means more I can always hit the ball further or shorter depending on whether how I'm hitting it off the face I'm really trying to hit the ball straighter I've kind of like this pull to the left Might be able to get there with the 56. It's typically a 90 yard club for me, 100 yard club. 110 to the target. And I'm hitting range balls, which don't, don't go as far. Oh, this is a TP5 someone threw in there. I don't know why people, I've done that before with like crappy balls hitting after my bucket's done and I'll throw a ball down, but not the TP5. came out of it Just to feel like right here. I like I go way too far back and just getting here and then compressing down. Try not to over swing. Really don't know how John Rom does it going to here. And he freaking he mashes the ball. Let me grab my 54, see if I can get there with a 54. But watching Scotty at the Masters, it's just like swing your swing, dude. Like, don't worry about being so technical and like, I gotta be here, here, here. If you can make good contact with the ball, you can have the weirdest follow through 
And that's the number one player in the world. Just won a green jacket. Like, show, shows that you can't be too technical. See, that was shorter. I hit my 56. I know it's only two degrees. My 56 and my 54 are going like the same distance. Probably an operator error. Not an equipment error. Let me see if I can get a little more speed on it. There you go. It's a little short, but getting some decent shots. No, this is 10 balls, so this is my 10th, I think, I counted out. Oh, no. That was terrible. That's my worst, worst miss, is like over here. I'm trying to get more towards the toe. You can see these balls are hitting kind of left of center. Probably why I'm losing some distance. Let me hit one more. Pretty good. So I like to hit when I'm warming up. I've done videos before where I'll start with my wedges. I see a lot of people. First thing they do is grab the three wood or the driver. I don't understand that. I don't know where that came from or how that started. But you want to get in that if you have 20 minutes before your round or just trying to get a decent practice session in. Hit mostly wedges and irons and you know five or six drivers um we'll go to eight i think that's what we were at 150 it was over at Xiao. and um i that's how i've always practiced i get i get most amateur golfers probably lose most strokes off the tee hitting it out of bounds or in the woods or in a tough area so i get why you want to dial your driver in but it's it's a different swing than all your other swings and to me short game makes a difference you ask any pro or any decent golfer and uh they work on their wedges and their irons way more than they do their their tee shot <laughs> and you put down that stick again I put down this alignment stick on the right side. Gives me a nice idea of where I'm aiming. Um, you know, on the range, you want to get feedback, some direction. to the right. Fly. Oh yeah. That was spicy. Also videotaping helps. I videotape most of my sessions. Even if I don't post it, um, I'm still trying to like 
get feedback or do like a slow motion and really kind of see where I'm at. And having some sort of pre-shot routine where you're behind, let's say this is the, the crossing the boundary line. Thinking about my shot here, I pick the club. The second I cross that line, I'm just swinging. There's no thinking about, all right, where do I need to aim? Where do I need to hit? What do I need to hit? I have my club, I have my aim, I have my direction. It's just about swinging. A little push again. It's on target though, it's on the little mound. Um, also, looking out, I'm looking at the trees in the distance. Some people like to pick a spot in front of them. Some people like to go. I don't like to look at my target. I like to look around my target. And that, to me, gives me more of an area to miss. It doesn't, doesn't have to be so exact in my, uh, my direction. Um, and if you hit the ball well, you know, 10 yards right, 10 yards left, a little short, that's not going to kill you in your round. What's going to kill you is being so focused on where you have to be and then you top it or you or you do something really bad shank it oh man i just jinxed myself with the saying the unmentionable but i i, I shank them every once in a while right at it again Oh, short. That was kind of lower, so it didn't go as, as far. Some people think um, you might get more rollout, but the ball tends to not fly as far if you hit it lower. I know. Duh. But some people don't know that. So it's aiming on the left side of those two trees you see, or that house. Trying to get my feet aligned with that and my club's face to the target. Ah. Ah. Oh, right again. <laughs> let's see, like, let's say I'm going to a green. That's short in front of the green. I'll take a chip. I'll go eight, I'll go eight, six, four. Um, I also listen to a lot of interviews with like golf pros and Brooks was talking about he only hits his odds or evens in his bag. And also if you're struggling to hit the ball off the ground, put it on the tee, you know, get some confidence Get a good idea of, of where you need to be and what you need to do. Don't make it super hard on yourself. You know, you have the par three, so you'll be able to tee it up. Also helps if you have good grass at the range. Not all ranges are created equal, kind of like Waffle House. But if there's no if there's no dirt, I'll I'll tee up every ball. I really don't care. I mean, there's no grass. If I'm not hitting off of dirt, that's not realistic in the fairway. Hopefully, you're not playing a course that's all dirt. So it gives you just better feedback and just a little bit more of a 
forgiveness. I got a long par four, 200 yards. I'm gonna tee this one up. Also playing, playing holes in your head if you're warming up before a round. Look at the scorecard. Be like, okay, I got a 186 par three. I got a 124 par three. What club am I gonna hit? Is it uphill, is it downhill? Think about the shot before you go out there and play. And that'll give you more confidence once you actually get there to perform. Because you've already played it in your head maybe once or twice, so. Four iron is typically 200, 205 for me, um, especially off the tee. You get you get a little bit more. You can get under it, hit the ball a little bit further. slowed that one down a little bit. It felt better. You got a better, better ball flight on that. I'm almost through my bucket. I got seven balls over there. I'm going to hit seven tee balls out of a 25, 30 ball bucket. So kind of gives you the range of where I'm at for other shots versus the tee ball. Make sure I'm set up decent with my camera. Yeah, that's good. Put the stick down. Again, give yourself a little bit of direction. You want to go as close to the stick as possible. If you hit it, let's say I went down and I hit the stick on this side, probably coming to inside out. My tendency is to do the opposite. I come down and go outside in. So you'll hit the stick on this side, coming across it. Also, if you're too close to the ball, you'll hit the stick every time. So you want to avoid that. Get yourself in a good posture. It's a three hybrid, so this is like, I'm a little bit more accurate with this than my three wood, mostly because my three wood, I'm trying to pound it. If I have like 250 or 260, I'm trying to hit it really hard. This is like a 220 club for me off the tee. This is like my fairway, like go-to fairway finder. Again, I don't care if I'm, I don't care if I'm hitting an eight iron into the green, as long as I'm in the fairway. A lot of high handicappers are either hitting from the rough or from the trees. Sometimes just being in the fairway, even if you're behind the 150, is a huge advantage for your score. See? You heard that? I hit the... It wasn't a bad ball. A little high, a little short, but hitting that stick, I know that on my downswing, I did something very wrong. Because I'm set up, I'm set up way away from it. Like, look how far, I mean, that's almost a club head. 
on the right side. So if I'm hitting that, I'm, I'm way out of my path. And that felt like maybe it was a little bit on the outside. I have to go back and see. That's why videotaping is so important. Because you can go back and see where you're actually at. So let me, I'm gonna put this more towards the toe. Now it goes three wood. And at this range, I'm not supposed to hit driver because the mounds out there. There's a uh, a T box. Yeah, this course 18 is right over those hills, so they don't want you to hit driver. So I, I can only really hit three wood. Um, even my three wood will make it to the hills sometimes. but I'll run that rolled up to the hill it's like 250 240 something like that with with carry and roll out it's typical three wood for me I'm not I'm like super long I'm not super long but I can hit it out there you know you really only need 250 off the tee even if it's driver I, I did, uh, when I was caddying at Sawgrass, I would have high handicappers, and I would just tell them to get to 250. Don't worry about everything else, just worry about getting a good ball out there, and we'll, we'll, we'll manage one shot at a time. Don't think about par four, just think about one shot at a time. Think about my tee shot, my direction, my aim, left of these trees, cross the line. Now I'm ready to execute. I'm not thinking about, oh, do I hit a cut? Do I hit a draw? I'm just swinging. A little bit low. And like I said, I'm, uh, I'm not supposed to hit driver, but for the fans out there today, you faithful watchers, I'm gonna hit one. And I like to put a, a stick right here. Cause I noticed most people, you'll you'll think you're, you're supposed to obviously be towards your left foot, but you'll think you're towards your left foot and you'll really be here. Or, or too far outside. That's a huge cut right there. If your hands are out here, so I like to put this stick down and have it just ride my, the inside of my left heel. And that tells me I'm going to be able to get a lot of height, and my ball position is pretty good. It's gonna be a big cut here. So this is the last ball. So you see I hit a bunch of wedges, a couple irons around the bag, a couple hybrids, a couple of woods, and two drives. And then I'm ready to go. I mean, that's my routine. It serves me pretty well. That's a bucket. That's how we do. And as always, golf's hard. Swing easy. See you next time.